pig ignorant. Dumb as an ox. Silly cow. Bird brain. But as you will see, these labels no longer fit what we now know about animals. That's okay, you're doing good. Pigs can use computer joysticks. Oh, good boy, that was good. Hens can learn from watching TV. But we allow these animals to be treated in ways that we wouldn't dream of treating our pets. The nearest most of us come to farm animals is in the supermarket, where we buy their meat, milk and eggs. But do we know how intelligent and sensitive they are, the conditions they are reared in, and how the decisions we make every day directly affect their lives. Scientific research has discovered that farm animals are far from stupid. This hen has spent her whole life living in a small cage. Despite a life in a cage, she has learnt how to navigate this obstacle course to get to a nest box. Driven by her instincts, she has to use her intelligence the computer won't open the door until she pecks three times. Her instincts tell her she is about to start a family and she should find a suitable place to build a nest. In this feeding experiment, the hen has learned from watching television in which bowl to find food. Even when offered a yellow bowl, she goes for the red one, as seen on TV. It's not only birds. This is Hamlet. He's amazed animal psychologists by learning a computer game designed for chimpanzees. Hamlet has to move the cursor into the blue area around the screen. When he does, he gets a sweet. The scientists make it progressively harder for Hamlet, yet he learns to succeed every time. Can other animals do this? Here is Lex, a Jack Russell dog. Lex is willing, but even after a year, he hasn't quite got it and needs help. Hamlet can do it without help and can learn to distinguish between different shapes. This and other experiments have shown that pigs not only perform better in this kind of test than dogs, but they can also perform better than most chimpanzees. Pigs are not only intelligent, they can also be lifesavers. This reconstruction retells a remarkable rescue story, 999 style. When she heard the scream of the boy, she quite naturally swam directly to him. The boy grabbed her harness and they both went under twice before she got her swimming stroke, but she knew that it was either do or die if she didn't get that swimming stroke that she too would drown. It seems that pigs are far from ignorant. The animals we care for at home, like dogs, get special treatment. We become very fond of them. Most people don't think of pigs in the same way. Why not? Are they just pieces of meat? Or living, breathing, thinking and feeling creatures? So how have we come to treat farm animals so differently from the way we treat pets? In medieval times, nearly everybody worked on the land and the cowherds and shepherds stayed with animals at all times. 
This was animal husbandry. In more recent centuries, farming has become more of a business, but even in the 1930s, most farms were run by families, which really knew each animal. Then, after the Second World War, the government wanted Britain to produce all the food it needed itself. To increase production, farming was transformed, almost overnight, from a business to an industry. It's called intensive farming, and one of its main characteristics is the factory farm. Inside is a warehouse of mass production where thousands of broiler, or meat chickens, lived crammed together with no space to spread their wings and no daylight. This factory system is designed to make them grow as quickly as possible. This makes meat plentiful and cheaper, but is it fair on the chicken? Imagine if we decided to do the same with your school. What sort of economies could we make that would save money and make it more efficient? Take this classroom. The size is carefully worked out for your health and comfort, but surely we could fit more people in. That looks a bit better. We have doubled the number of pupils. But do we really need the desks? That's more efficient. It would make education cheaper and we could call it intensive schooling. Are there other savings we could make? Like they do with mass-produced chickens. Are they allowed to roam freely outdoors? No. So you won't be needing your playground then. Have your breaks in here. We don't need the canteen. Just look at all that wasted space. We'll bring food to the room. Do we really need loos? This would save an awful lot of money. Lights out. Of course, living this intensively with so many other pupils, we would expect tempers to get frayed and arguments to break out. So the dark will keep you calm. There's still a problem. Crowded conditions encourage disease. To solve that, you could send round soft drinks packed with antibiotics. This would be efficient, but would you like it? In addition to the crowding, meat or broiler chickens have been selectively bred to put on weight very quickly. The chicken on the left is a normal sized egg layer. The chicken on the right is a broiler selectively bred for meat. He grows so much faster, putting on weight at an extraordinary rate. So you don't have to look after him for very long before you can sell him for slaughter. More money for lower costs. But putting on weight this fast has its consequences. The body gets too big for the legs. The legs can then collapse under the strain. Thousands of chickens are painfully crippled by the time they reach their slaughter weight. For some, it's difficult to eat or drink. This bird is very thirsty, but can't stay upright long enough to drink what he needs. If his problems get worse, he'll die. Dairy cows have also been selectively bred to make food faster to produce more and more milk. In the UK and most European countries, milk yields have doubled over the last 40 years. Producing all this milk means our cows need more concentrated food, so they can't just eat grass. As production becomes more intensive, instead of going out to graze, their feed is brought to them. More and more cows spend most of the year indoors, these cows never go outside. Keeping cows indoors and breeding them to produce increasing quantities of milk means that more of them suffer from leg problems, such as lameness. Would it be better if we bred cows to produce slightly less milk and we let them spend more time in fields? Many systems for keeping pigs look more like factories 
than farms. These are sows, kept for breeding piglets. In Europe, many sows spend the first four weeks of each pregnancy in cages, which are so small they cannot even turn around. Bored and frustrated, they spend much of the day repetitively biting the bars. In Britain, these cages are banned, but most of the pork, ham and bacon on sale is imported from countries where the sow is kept in conditions like this. Just before giving birth, the sow is moved to a farrowing crate, where she gives birth to a litter of 10 or more piglets. This system is designed to reduce the risk that the sow will crush her offspring. But there are other ways which are less restrictive for the sow. When the piglets are only three or four weeks old, the mother is removed. Confused as to where their mother has gone, the piglets try to find her. When the mother next wants to suckle her piglets, she becomes distressed and calls out to them. At only four weeks old, the piglets still want to suckle. The sudden change in diet can cause digestive upsets, so piglets often need to be given antibiotics. They will often live in crowded and barren conditions, which leave them bored and restless, and they are likely to bite each other's tails. To stop this, these piglets have had most of their tails cut off. They are fattened up until the age of four or five months when they are sent to slaughter. Wouldn't it be better if pigs had straw and access to fields to give them a better life before they are killed for meat? Hens who lay eggs have their factories too. The most intensive are the cage systems. Whilst the worst cages have been banned in the EU, these new enriched cages still give hens only slightly more space each than an A4 piece of paper. Here, the hen is kept to produce one egg a day. The eggs are cheap, but would you like to be treated in this way? Is it right to keep anyone locked up when they haven't done anything wrong? And each time you buy a battery cage egg, a hen has been kept in for a day. Each time you buy a free range egg, it's a chicken's day out. Free range hens can behave in ways which aren't possible when confined in a cage. In their natural environment, all chickens exercise by scratching around for bits of food. When they get dirty or greasy, they dust bathe. The dust absorbs the grease and they feel comfortable again. Are these natural behaviours really possible in a cage? With intensive farming, meat has become progressively cheaper compared to a century ago, when it was seen as a luxury. But while it is plentiful and cheap today, it's not actually the most efficient way to produce the food that gives us the energy to live. When a pig is fed corn, only about a third of the energy he consumes is turned into pork or bacon, and half of that is fat which may be discarded. The rest is either used in respiration to generate energy for exercise and for keeping warm, or it is wasted, ending up in the pig's faeces. Factory farms try to prevent this energy being used up by limiting the chance for pigs to exercise and by keeping them in warm conditions so more meat is produced instead. But even with intensive methods, the energy conversion from corn to bacon isn't very efficient. It would be more efficient to feed us the corn directly. In this way, you could get several bowls of cornflakes for just one bacon sandwich. There is not just one way of rearing farm animals or producing food. We need food to live, but we can choose what it is, where it came from and how it was produced. If you eat meat, then on average in your lifetime you will consume 
more than a thousand chickens, 25 turkeys, 20 sheep, 25 pigs, four beef cattle, the life's work of 50 laying hens and half the produce of a dairy cow. To that you can add thousands of fish. The lives these creatures lead will depend on the choices you make. You can buy the cheapest meat and eggs. You can eat less meat, or you can go vegetarian or vegan, or you can go for free range or organic. On this farm, the hens can enjoy their freedom because people are increasingly choosing free range. Schemes like the Food for Life programme encourage school canteens to use cage-free eggs and other sustainable foods. Thanks to shoppers who care about hens, today around half of Britain's egg production is free range. There are similar farms for meat or broiler chickens. The chickens are free to range and to go in and out of the shed. Shelters are provided where they can hide from predators and get out of the sun. There is plenty of dust to dust bathe and they can peck at grass and hunt for worms. Some pig farmers allow the animals the freedom to express most of their natural behaviour. These piglets still have their tails, since piglets who have plenty of space and enough to do are less likely to bite each other's tails. You can buy RSPCA freedom food, free range or organic pork or sausages in the shops. In Britain, sheep and beef cattle are often kept free range, which makes sense because they can live on grass which is cheap to grow. Keeping animals which eat grain, like pigs and chickens, outdoors can be more expensive, but should animals pay the price for cheap food? See how these dairy cows enjoy being allowed out for the first time in spring, after spending the winter indoors. Many dairy cows in conventional systems do still get to graze. To be sure, you can buy organic milk, cheese and butter, since all organic cows in Britain must have access to grass. Everybody can make a big difference to the welfare of farm animals. You can do this through the food you choose to buy. And you can speak up for the animals who can't speak for themselves. In this film, we have seen that farm animals are intelligent and sensitive, feeling creatures. In the last 70 years, we have kept them more intensively in our efforts to provide cheap food. Now we need to decide whether it is right to go on like this. How do you think we should treat farm animals in the 21st century?